What's good, Spurs Knights? It's your boy Clan. Here with a brand new video. If you could give me a like, subscribe, turn that notification bell on. Um, I'm getting on here today to discuss Damari Carroll just for a few minutes. Uh, apparently, you know, I checked, I went on Twitter. <laughs> Somebody said, who cares, fam? Listen, listen. I went on Twitter and I said, you know what? Somebody brought to my attention that Damari Carroll tweeted something out saying that, you know, I'm just up thinking or something like that. It was like 2 a.m. when he posted it or 1 something. It was one, it was really early in the morning. He said, I'm just up thinking. And I said, you know what, just for the, you know, I'm sure I won't find anything, but let me just go to the like category and see what type of tweets he's liked. And literally a day ago, he liked a tweet that I guess went under the radar of every Spurs fan. I mean, no one mentioned it to me anyways. And he liked a tweet that pretty much says it all, that this guy is not happy right now, and he really feels like the Spurs are mishandling him, and he's not happy with Popovich. Uh, let me see. Let me see here. Yeah. Yeah, okay, so let me just tell you what's going on. So apparently he liked a tweet, and I'm gonna read the tweet out to you that Damari Carroll liked, and it's very telling of what type of headspace he's in right now. And honestly, reading this, it makes me feel like, yeah, we're not gonna see him play at all for the rest of the season. Uh, they were looking for a home for him, they were looking to move him, but yeah, doesn't look good. So this is the tweet. It's a, I'm assuming this is a fan uh, by Michael Espinoza, and he sent something to Damari, or at least tagged him, and it says, I would also like to apologize to you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's, it's this way. Uh, I read it backwards. He said, it's more than getting minutes. He has pride. He's helped every team he's gone to and thought he was coming to a great situation in San Antonio, but finds himself dropped off at a kill shelter with no help in sight. Unless the Spurs, unless the Spurs plan to use him as trade bait to move up the draft. And then he said, I would also like to apologize to you for the way you're being treated and mishandled. It's highly unprofessional and disrespectful the way the Spurs organization and Popovich are treating you. Thank you for, for your professionalism and high character you show on a daily basis. These are two tweets that Damari Carroll has liked. And I think that's very telling because if he didn't like it, I mean, that would be, that would basically be saying, well, I don't completely agree with it, but this tweet right here, especially the second one that I read, where he says it's highly unprofessional and disrespectful the way the Spurs organization and Pop are treating you. I would think as a basketball player on a team and you have some type of connection to that team, you would try your best not to show any type of reaction to that type of tweet. But for him to go out here and say, screw it, I'm gonna like it, even after the trade deadline, I, th I think it's telling that we're probably not going to see him at all this season. Um, I don't know what happened. I mean, maybe you guys can can enlighten me on it. I don't really understand. I was confused the whole season why he wasn't playing, but maybe it is more that's going on behind the scenes. I don't know. Um, now, some people might say the Spurs just mishandled the situation once again, which I would have a hard time disagreeing with you. Now, when I think back of the Kawhi situation, I think that's a totally different situation. He won a championship with San Antonio. They treated him right. They gave him the keys to the car. Uh, then he goes to Toronto, wins the championship, and he still goes to L.A. I think, I think he was going to go to L.A. no matter what. Okay? So I, I don't think that the Spurs necessarily mistreated Kawhi and his, his, his uncle. So I think that's a totally different situation. But if we're talking about right here, right now, and how this situation is panning out with Damari Carroll, 
maybe it is very likely that they mistreat him. I don't know. Uh, as much as I know about Damari Carroll, his whole career, he's been pretty, you know, a consistent leader. He's been a pretty good uh, role model for the most part. Um, so the Spurs not being able to utilize him or use him on the court at all, and then him basically saying, hey, yeah, I don't like how the Spurs have been unprofessional and disrespectful and all that. I, I don't know. I don't know. Honestly, the whole loyalty thing with the San Antonio Spurs, I'm still loyal as far as my loyalty to the Spurs and my loyalty to the organization. And I think that loyalty still has a part in the NBA and in professional sports. But this right here with the Damari Carroll situation right now, and then with the Marcus Morris thing where he just vamped, um, yeah, loyalty is starting to look less and less prevalent with our team. Um, I don't know. I, I think I've been saying that I think that he should play. I've been saying that I think that he could help this team. I've been saying most of the season that I think he should start. But if he's this far gone when he's starting to like tweets from, you know, this, I guess a random fan, I don't know who this is, but, you know, a random guy on Twitter saying, hey, man, they're mishandling you. Pop is treating you wrong. The organization is unprofessional, and you like that? He might be too far gone, y'all. He might be too far gone. Um, and honestly, I mean, I don't know what to say. Like, I, I want to, I, I want to get on to Damari Carroll for this, but then it's like I don't know where his headspace is at because his track record has shown that he doesn't typically get this upset. I mean, from what I've seen. Um, Maybe the Spurs way just ain't it for him. I don't know. Now, if we're being completely honest, when we've seen him on the court, he hasn't played that well. <laughs> I mean, I don't, I'm not using that excuse. I mean, I think that his whole career should, you know, give him the ability to play some, some time with San Antonio, period. But maybe it was something where they promised one thing and it just didn't pan out that way. Maybe when they initially wanted to sign him, they had in mind that they were gonna, you know, have another player, and then when Mark things went down with Marcus Morris, maybe plans changed. I don't know, guys. I don't know. But as far as right now, it doesn't look good. Damari Carroll is not happy. Um, and yeah, just looking through here, it's like, yeah. Uh, I'm trying to see if there's anything else that he put out to indicate that he's upset. Um, Right now, that looks like that's about that's about it. Hold on. Before I get off, I'm gonna check one more time so I make sure I don't miss anything. But yeah, that that's not that's not looking good. That is not Gucci. Um, on a brighter note, uh, on his Twitter, he still has the Spurs, so he still has that in his bio. So he didn't pull a Dejounte Murray and said, "Screw it, I'm not even the point guard" or whatever Dejounte did. Um, let's see. Oh, actually, this has been going on for a while. Yeah, this has been going on for a while. Uh, February 6th, somebody tweeted, and Damari Carroll liked this as well. And it says, you got a feel for Damari Carroll, man. He just wants the ball. Damn it, Spurs, free this man. Yeah. So, trying to see if there's anything else. Yeah, that's it. That's it. So it looks like about four days ago, he liked a tweet that basically said, free this man. So he wanted to be gone. Uh, and then literally a day ago, uh, yeah, <laughs> he liked this long tweet about, you know, not being there. I mean, it's, it's very, it's very disappointing, man. I'm trying to see if there's anything he tweeted. Um, he tweeted on the ninth, hard work is talent. Um, keep grinding despite the situation, stay positive despite the situation, two rules. Uh, woke up feeling blessed, uh, control what you can control. Man, it looks like, it looks like he was expecting to get traded and that didn't happen and he's pretty, he's pretty upset. Um, I'll just give my thoughts on it, what I think happened. What I think happened was the San Antonio Spurs promised one thing and 
they felt they told him that he would get plenty of playing time. And as the season went on, I think that because he played earlier in the season, but I think that Popovich didn't like how he was playing out there because I did think he was rushing shots sometimes. I think that maybe in practice they didn't really like the direction they were going in. Maybe statistically, statistic wise, we looked like a better team with different people on the on the court. So maybe they looked at analytics on that. And then more and more, he just didn't get playing time. And I think he's upset about it. And he's like, you promised me this. This is my opinion, right? I think he is upset about it. Um, but yeah, I'm sorry, I missed the super chat. Uh, Victor Lines TV sent the super chat. Thank you for the super chat, by the way. That's really dope of you, dude. Uh, he said, Carol and DeRozan were teammates on the 2015-16 Raptors. They took the Raptors to the conference finals that year. Carroll deserves to play. He can shoot threes and defend. I agree with you. I, Me personally, I've been saying this whole time. This is why I'm not going in on Damari Carroll where I'm getting angry or anything about him because honestly, I think this is the first time me being a Spurs fan that I, I have a crooked eye to the organization with this situation right here because this team needs attitude. And Damari Carroll is that attitude. He's that guy that we need on that court. He is a Jakob Pertl. He is a DeMar DeRozan. He is a DeJounte. You know, he he is that attitude, and we need an identity, and he's part of that identity, and us not utilizing him is crazy to me. I don't know what happened. Like I said, I don't know what happened. Uh, maybe it was some things happening behind closed doors. I don't know. But this isn't looking good. This isn't looking good. And I... Do not expect us seeing any more of him this season. I'm trying to see if there's anything else. I'm I'm really shocked this went under the radar. No one mentioned this to me. Yeah, there's there's nothing else. Out here, he. I mean, I mean, he liked the tweet from Quincy Pondex that said, "Keep going." Um, maybe this could be cryptic in a way. I don't know. But 16 hours ago, Jamal Crawford tweeted out, "Sometimes just sit back and watch. You will be surprised at what you see." And he liked that. But you know, that could be anything. So let's not get too into that. Yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know what else to say, guys. Um, tomorrow was the main reason we got back into the Houston game. We got an over. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get off. Uh, I appreciate the super chat. I appreciate everybody coming through when you do. Like I said, as soon as I see things, I'm getting on here and talking about it. So, shoot. Catching this tweet and this like tweet, this makes me want to just get on every single Spurs player and see what they liked. Because, yeah, this ain't good, y'all. This ain't good. All right, y'all. I will see you later. Uh, I might talk after the game or during the game. I'm not sure. But I'm definitely going to be on the group chat. So, if you haven't joined the group chat, please do. The group chat is... Flick Sports, that's the, uh, that's the, uh, what's it called? How do you say it? That's, that's the app. All right, so get on there. Uh, type in Spurs Chat on the Flick Sports app. We're on there. I'm going to go live on there so we can, you know, talk during the game. But, yeah, this is disappointing. You can see I'm kind of down about it. <laughs> All right, guys, yeah, later. All right, I'll get with you later. Deuces.